Okay, uh, I've done a little bit of work in between the last few and this one. Um, I've added, um, uh, have I added any pages? Probably might have added a page or two. What I have done is rearranged this title block. I've put some of this text onto this layer called change text. Okay, so not all of this stuff is going to be you would you want to have on every single page. So things like the job number would be changing. Um, you know, maybe the date's going to change and the scale is going to change or you can add to the scale. So there's certain things that you would probably want to have um, individually on each page. So, for example, if I was to take the date. Now, this is the current date. So if I double click that, that's current date. So the current date might change and then it might update on all of these things. If I also wanted to right click and convert auto text to text, then that is now no longer um, a piece of auto text. This is now text. So control C and then back to page two and control V and then that's put that in and I could amend that piece of text. Okay, so this auto text is quite useful for certain things, but uh, it's not the answer to every thing in layout. What else have I done? Uh, amended the title block, um, but that's really about it. So I've got vectors and references as well, these two extra layers. Now what I'm going to do is make sure that the references are on the reference layer, so they are. And if I go back to the page one, I can select these, and these are all on reference as well, donated by that little dot that appears on something. Right, I'm going to uh, explain a few things about vector and raster and how that affects the images that come in from the reference SketchUp file and also how then we can turn without too much difficulty if you wanted to do it something that looks like this into something that looks like this okay so the first thing we need to clear up is the difference between uh, a vector graphic and a raster graphic. Raster graphics are uh, pixels, these things. Okay, so this is set under file and document setup. If we go to the paper, then we've got render resolution set on this. And the edit quality and the output quality are both set to high. If I was to set that to low, then we would see that this sort of rasterization isn't very sharp at all. So I'll just go back and set this to where we document setup, set this back up to high. So we get a much better view. This is the kind of way it's going to look when it's printed out. And to be perfectly honest, unless you were zooming in to this sort of level, it wouldn't really be a problem. Now, the reason we've also got sort of very jaggedy edges around here is because when we create sort of images in SketchUp or referenced images, they all come in by default as raster images. They have a thickness, a line thickness to them. Okay, so if we select the actual image reference and we go to the styles with my current style, which is the hidden line, I will change that output style to point 0.1 and then hit enter and that basically sharpens this up no end. Okay, so that's pretty nice to have as a background view. What you can also do is turn the color on, which I've done for this one. Now, if I turn the color on for this, so I'm looking at architectural design style. Sorry, the architectural design style uh, with a cut to this one here. I want to see through it. And you just make sure that the line weight is the same line weight you want. So we've now got the image as a backdrop, even though it's a little bit so raggedy, but this again won't necessarily come out looking like this in the printout unless you're zooming in right close to it and then we get sort of these things that we can manipulate now a vector graphic if I just go down to my layers and I've got vectors and references references are raster and vectors if I just lock out my references so all these sort of file images I can't select this now can't select that I can just marquee select around these bits these are the sort of vectors, which are paths, which can then be filled with a color and a pattern and all the other bits and pieces. And if I just select that, and I can copy that across to here as well. So control. Now with this, I can set the order in which it displays. So I want to send this to back so it's sitting 
below that you see at the moment it's just sort of sitting over there so with that selected arrange center back and that sort of sits underneath it now providing all these vector graphics are sitting in a layer that's above the references they will all sit on top of the reference and you can create a huge number of these and again this references the stacking order of the objects on the drawing if references went above vectors then I wouldn't see any of these if they were sitting there because this image would be sitting over the top so that's why I would like to have the vector graphics sitting on top they give a much sharper sort of view to everything and if I'd made some sort of slight error sorry zooming in and out but this is just you know not quite right there something's gone a little bit awry with it it might just be the um, the anti-aliasing or something uh, affecting this but whatever it is it doesn't look perfect and sadly I would like it to look as good as it possibly can so I'm going to pick these up and just move them back it'll still snap to these references so I'll pick it up from that outside corner and just drag it in and snap it to that point there so it's just sitting nicely on top again so it does give it a nice sharp finish what I'll also be able to do is snap to these points when I'm using my dimension settings so to generate the vectors one way you could uh, affect it is by if I just go and turn these references back on I could click on this and instead of having on my SketchUp thing instead of having that image as a raster image I could turn it onto a vector image so that's kind of quite useful but what that does it strips away all the background and it also shows me lots of other bits of wireframe stuff that I don't necessarily want and to go into that this is still a reference if I wanted to explode this so it no longer became a reference I could right click and explode this now I've basically just got lines okay that's all that's given me is a load of lines and what I could do I mean this might be useful can escape so I've got all these here a nice smooth much smoother lines but again you can see all the other lines with them and if I start to explode or not explode but ungroup and it's going to take a, a while just to sort of deselect and then select this and ungroup this as well I don't know how they arrange the groupings and the ungroupings but I'm now I've now got so sort of this thing that I could use I could move that whoops daisy I could move this out of the way by clicking on it and dragging it and then I could use my join tool and I could click on that point and that point and that point and that point so I can create a closed shape now this might seem a bit like a faff but there is a much easier way to do it and this is what I would do is take this and then move this into position I like that and once I've created this style I can then use the style icon snap to that and then paste that into that so I basically once I've created one style that I'm happy for, for a sort of section fill um, then that can be applied to all sorts of different things now that is one way of doing it you basically take the bits that you want and move them in to this another way of doing it is to go back into the SketchUp model so if I just delete that for a second and we go back over to the SketchUp model I'll just load it okay so I'm now in my SketchUp model again sorry about that um, what I want to do is to create a section from the slice so I need basically to turn the planes on so it's not a selection from the slice sorry it's a create group from slice so I click on this that's now created a group from that slice I can turn this off now the group sits kind of behind the section planes you can't actually see it at the moment um, if we then go back to scene one which is orthographic we kind of want the orthographicness of it um, I'm just going to move this out of the way okay on the green axis so it's important that it is sitting plumb and orthographic if it's not then you're not going to get the right sort of image so this thing I could have been a bit more judicious about where I put this this is just a part of that thing but this has given me just the, the lines that I want it's not showing me any extra stuff okay so I'll just go back to scene one and what I need to do with this is to control X to copy or to cut and then I can go back into layout and I can 
control V, I'm just going to paste it, and that's going to paste it into the drawing, and I can just move this over here. Now, this is basically a window, okay, so I can then go on the sections, or the SketchUp toolbar, and make sure that my current scale, is ortho is set, so that's correct, my current scale is 1 to 20. So that's going to make this the same size as that. So I'll just drag that down. I'll just drag that up. And then if I was to position this over that, then you'll see that it sits perfectly in position. I'll just nudge it so you can kind of see what's going on. Now this is again a raster. So then I go to this, turn that to a vector. Now I can right click and explode at the right scale and now I've got sort of half the information that I really want. And I can also, what I should have done, sorry, step back, change the style maybe of 0.2. So that's kind of giving me sort of nicer lines. And then I can vector it. So now we've got nice smooth lines, and then I can right click and explode. And then I can right click again and then group. And aspects of this, just keep ungrouping until you've kind of broken it down to the bits that you want. So I don't want that. Don't want these things. And I possibly don't want this either. Don't want the top bit. Probably don't want the back planes. So you can just you understand what I'm doing. You just I'm stripping this out, basically to the things that I want. <laughs> when I've got those, I can just move these out of the way, and then with my join tool, it's not it doesn't take too long to put these together. Now this is a little line in there, so I've got to make sure that these. And when you're joining something, just make sure you see it all. Once you've done that, then this is now a shape, and this obeys this. So if I wanted to make it 0 0.2 or whatever. If I wanted to fill this, and I turn the fill on. If I wanted to make it a certain color, so I click on there and then make it a certain color, then that's that. If I wanted to put a pattern inside it, then I click on the pattern bit and apply sort of block lines. Oh, there you go. For some weird reason, didn't really like what was going on, so I'll just drag that in to create that. So that was a little bit of a faff as well. <laughs> Apologies for that. So in SketchUp, I'm just creating the group from the slice. And then in Layout, I'm just sort of ripping out the bits and pieces that I want. And then making sure that these are on the vector layer. So if they're not, just select all the objects and go down to the layers. Just make it set to vector. And you will then be able to sit these on top of your model, like so. Okay, and then choose the line thickness and all the other bits and pieces that you need, and you're pretty much done. So, again, it's not necessarily required, but really, if you want a really nice looking drawing, then it will help. I mean, this is just the raster view, and really, for most people, this would be absolutely fine. All I need to do for this one is again create a group from the slice and just fill this in with a nice sort of solid color to identify the existing service and then use a similar sort of thing to that. I could just basically take one of these and copy that down there because it should be the same thickness. Rotate through 90 degrees. Keep your finger on the shift key to lock out or use uh, some of one of these snaps. And then this should just check in down to there and then I can copy that to these. It will snap to these things. Take that all the way across to there. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, one more thing I'm going to do is just change this to a coloured view. Why not? It's uh, I got the option too, so it makes it look a little bit nicer. So if I choose architectural design style as opposed to the hidden line, they get the kind of colours that come out. Just quite a long uh, little set there, but hopefully you've got the idea. SketchUp and Layout working together. Um, what we'll do in the next video when we come back is 
and I've done, finished all this off. I'll put all the sort of shading into this and just finish these bits off and put some little crosses onto that. Um, this raster view I will change to 3.1 so it, we can actually see the detail and then I can fill in the outlines with various other bits and pieces. Um, once I've done that, uh, we can then start looking at adding some text and some dimensions and we'll be pretty much done.